Welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the IRF Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host, Eric Keim, and special guest, Tom Cole, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Integra Technologies. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thanks, Pat. Great to be here with you guys, and nice to be back in person for a change instead of uh, suffering through yet another Zoom call. Yes, indeed. So we've heard over the years a lot about GAN technology replacing traveling wave tubes, but to date it's been kind of limited. So I hear you have a new exciting architecture using high voltage GAN and efficient power combining that could change that paradigm. Could you tell us about that? Absolutely. So Integra's new architecture and, and where it begins is really our high voltage GAN. So the technology that Integra has developed and our patent pending transistor structure has really produced a power density that's unparalleled from our competition. So at 100 volts, we are actively designing parts that are achieving 22 watts per millimeter power densities. And that's something that's really unheard of in terms of, of enabling a single transistor power. So as the graphic that we've provided is showing, we start with the pallet. And this is a single pallet that is doing six kilowatts. And that particular pallet example is roughly about two and a half inches by five inches, so very compact form factor. And then as the illustration shows, we take these higher power pallets using our high voltage GAN, and we put that in with a ability to replace multiple pallets with one. So as the graphic showing, we're taking out four pallets in a system and replacing it by a single one. And so all of that additional combining loss goes away as part of that. So the architecture becomes instrumental in helping make traveling wave tube replacement. So working in collaboration with a company called Whirlatone, Integra has actually uh, put out systems that can now raise and redefine what's possible for solid state replacement of traveling wave tubes. So previously we were limited to about 10 kilowatts where that was a practical TWT replacement size for solid state. Now we've actually redefined that completely and we're able to do megawatt level SSPA replacement. So now tubes that, that range up to several megawatts can be practically replaced with our high voltage GAN combined with Whirlatone's very novel E-plane power combining technology. And those two things together have allowed us to collaborate on, I think we're on our fourth or fifth system now, that we're helping people to re-architect for megawatt level powers. So it's been really fun to watch the technology proliferate and to see what's possible now that we have eliminated that barrier for solid state replacement. You mentioned Whirlatone. Uh, what's their involvement in the development? So Whirlatone has been uh, collaborating with Integra now for almost two years. What drew me to them was they have a very novel power combining technology called an E-plane. And this is something that, that pretty quickly as we started to collaborate with Whirlatone, we realized that one plus one equals three in terms of Integra's high voltage GAN combined with Whirlatone's very novel E-plane technology for power combining having something like 18 times the power handling of other legacy combining technologies. So this really took us to the, the place where we started to work together and realize that we could practically replace traveling wave tubes up to megawatt level and give people the benefits of solid state, whether it be reliability, whether it be the dynamic waveform aspect, all of these things now become practical through that combination of Whirlatone Z-Plane and Integra's high voltage GAN. These are some very impressive power levels. You know, what levels are you able to achieve? What kind of efficiency? And, you know, how does that correlate to what frequencies you're working at? Yeah, absolutely. This has been uh, kind of a, a range of things that we've done. Right now, we have four active megawatt level uh, TWT and solid state replacements even replacing what was done in a legacy setting at 50 volt GAN with our high voltage GAN and these E-plane combiners. So for example, with one early warning radar system, we have been able at S-band to replace what was housed in two six foot high racks at 150 kilowatts with a single four foot rack that's doing 200 kilowatts. Wow. 
And that's been kind of the, we coined a term a few years ago called swap C squared. And this is really size, weight, power, cost, and complexity. And it's that complexity factor that's really driving these architectures. Because if you need 500 transistors at 50 volts, but you can do it with 50 at 100 volts, it radically changes what's possible in terms of that, that system size for the same power out of the antenna. With those power levels you're talking about, what about heat dissipation and reliability? Uh, how do your designs compare to current TWTs? Yeah, so if you look at, at that from uh, really underpinning that reliability piece, it starts with the ultimate efficiency that the device does. And Integra's Gen 4 GAN, which is 100 volts and a novel patent-pending transistor design that we came up with in our team uh, about two years ago, that produces almost 10 points higher efficiency per transistor than other competing designs. So for us, with these multi-kilowatt transistors and being able now to combine that with less power combining to get to your ultimate level. So for example, every two transistors you combine, you pay a penalty, whether it's a tenth of a dB or a two tenths of a dB, and all of that is heat. So if you can save that by combining less, you automatically increase the efficiency of the system. And it's a it's a, a lovely thing to watch when you see the math because you start on a even a 20 kilowatt system, you can save 10 kilowatts of combining loss by going to high voltage GAN. So now extrapolate that to megawatts, and it is an awful lot of power that you do not have to cool and a lot of savings in terms of efficiency for the system. So something that gets us very exciting with that. And reliability-wise, solid state has always been a very uh, large jump from typical tube lifetimes. You go from 50,000 hours to 500,000 hours. So at the reliability level, we're able to provide with high voltage GAN a much longer lifetime for a given system and a much higher reliability level through that technology. So you really are talking about a whole new architecture here, which is really interesting. So what do you see for the future of this technology and some of the applications that it can enable? We love seeing some of the smart things that uh, people have done with the technology. It's always fun as a, as a device level company to see very smart people in different markets that have picked up the technology and been able to do something that couldn't be done previously. So where we see this going is to really reduce the size of things like directed energy or high power microwave systems that defend against drones and missiles and other types of threats, where now you can have a system that benefits not only from a smaller space than a tube, but you can also do dynamic waveforms. And that's key to be able to, to produce the waveform that defends against a variety of different threats. So we see that as one area. Certainly on the medical side, this has been a, a really fun thing to watch because we've helped reduce the size of cancer ablation systems, for example, because we're giving them a transistor that's 10 times higher than they were using before in terms of output power, makes the system smaller and more portable and easy to transport and even agriculture, believe it or not. This has been an area I never thought I would be involved with in an RF and microwave career, but we have a, a series of companies and entities who are experimenting with our UHF uh, radar pallets. Turns out they make excellent RF pesticide, and they're able to eliminate a certain pest in the soil using a very uh, high power GAN uh, pulse and that allows them to eliminate a very nasty chemical that is otherwise used to eliminate that pest. So for us, it's been really exciting to see what very smart people have done in these different applications that we would have never thought to be involved with, but are enjoying being involved with. Well, thanks, Tom. That's great. And uh, again, thanks for taking the time to come in and chat with us. This is certainly an exciting development and very high power solid state electronics solutions uh, we look forward to following your progress on this. And uh, to our audience, if you would like to see more videos like this, you can find them at videos.microwavejournal.com. And thank you for watching.